all I want to talk about is this dog, right? Well, are you a, a dog or a cat person? I think this is a false binary choice that you're giving me. Oh, that's your choices. I don't have to choose. Are you a guinea pig person or a dog person? I would own a guinea pig before I would own a dog. So you don't even like dogs. We're going to so talk, like talk, so like talk about this guy's dog and you don't even like dogs. I love dogs. Do you really? My background with pets is of being on tour and it would be irresponsible for me to own any pet. Or else I'm that dickhead that's like, hey, can you go over and feed my dog while I'm on tour? Or like, can I leave my dog at your fucking house for three months while I'm gone? You know, that's just shitty. I forgot you're a rock star. So I never really thought of owning animals for myself. Yeah. Um, they have personalities too. I mean, it's like saying, do you like people or not? Sure. A lot of them definitely could do without yeah, I'm definitely more of a dog person, but mm-hmm. I grew up with cats and dogs, and we have a cat and a dog right now, but I'm definitely more like the, the dog is kind of my dog, and the cat is my wife's cat. But uh, this guy's dog, it's an upsetting story. I think- uh, Oh, Sublime Dog? Yeah. Yeah. Do we reference it? Does the dog have a name? Lou Dog. Is a dog's name. All right. So for everyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, uh, Lou Dog the Dalmatian is Bradley Noel's- I mean, Is it Bradley Noel or Bradley Noel? I have no idea. Yeah, it's probably one of them. And if it's not, we don't care. Yeah, whatever. He sings about this dog all the time. They use pictures of this dog in the band's album packaging. I'm pretty sure the dog is in the music videos. The dog is everywhere. Yeah, if you've heard three Sublime songs, you've heard him sing about Lou Dog. We took this trip to Garden Grove, smelled like Lou Dog inside the van. It's just one of the lines. Lou Dog is essentially the band's mascot. Absolutely. Which, you know, I was thinking about, we were talking about this a little bit. I think maybe bands need mascots. I actually like the idea of bands having mascots, but this poor dog was kind of put through the ringer. This is not a happy ending of this dog just lived on the tour bus and got to do cool stuff. The dog was, for all intents and purposes, kind of tortured. Well, this is probably what would happen if more bands had a mascot. I agree with you from sort of a... Marketing. More PR, public imaging uh, standpoint. You know, every president, except for our current president, has had a dog. It's expected because of the way that it looks. It makes you seem... Uh, it's like part of the psyche of America. It makes you seem human. It makes you seem like, yeah, not a murderer. Right, Which, right. you know, again, every president that we've had is a murderer. Yeah, but they have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but people are sucker for animals. This is often why you'll see a homeless person with a dog because it's like, Jesus Christ, that dog's survival depends on that homeless person's survival. I'd better give them some money. It's effective. It's just today I saw a homeless person with a dog, and I, I knew we were going to record this. I was like, man, it, it definitely made me look twice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I would have just been like, okay, another person panhandling and bummer. But because they had a dog, doubled, not even doubled, it quadrupled <laughs> the amount of attention that I gave this because I was like, Oh, man, the poor dog. Is a dog getting food? Man, it stresses you out, right? It it really stresses me out. Any Sublime song where this dog gets referenced stresses me the fuck out because there's no way that Bradley is a responsible pet owner. And he's usually straight up telling us that he's not a responsible pet owner in the same song when he's singing about the fact that he's got this dog around all the time. I think it's fair to assume that the dog is exposed to a lot of of bad things all the time for a very long period of time. The person that is supposed to be looking out for him, we know for a fact, cannot even take care of himself. Yeah. Did not successfully chaperone himself through this experience we call life. So it's fair to say that the dog did not get the best treatment for a majority of his life. In one of their biggest songs, uh, What I Got, he sings about how he doesn't cry when his dog runs away, dude, I, why is your dog running away? And why don't you care? Dogs have a tendency sometimes to escape. They're escape artists sometimes. Often enough to where you would write a song about it. No. This dog is panicking. Man, all this dude does is play shitty guitar and smoke weed. I got to get the fuck out of here. And Brad's like, uh, who cares? Yeah, he literally says in the song that he doesn't give a fuck if his dog just bounces. Oh, well. No sense worrying about it. I got shit to do. Yeah. Like this fucking, <laughs> like <this> fucking bowl. <laughs> yeah. Gotta hit this pipe. Same song. I got a Dalmatian. I can still get high. So I don't know if this dude is so stupid. He thinks there's a specific law against getting high if you own a Dalmatian. 
or if he does in fact realize that being stoned all the time may be a hindrance to responsible pet ownership, but either way, he does not seem to care. He just never seems to care. Drugs first, dog second. Yeah. This is bad behavior. Always been worried about this dog, and I looked it up for this, and man, this makes me so mad. They were always taking this dog on stage with them, and apparently, Lou Dog went deaf from being on stage while the band was playing at very loud volumes. They got this dog on stage with no sort of hearing protection. This is animal abuse, in case anyone is wondering. Yeah, if this was anybody, if uh, you had a friend who had a dog and he said, oh, my dog went deaf because I play loud music in my house, or I'm always playing guitar in my house, my dog went deaf, you would immediately go, what a fucking shitbag. Dude, don't let your dog go deaf while you playing guitar. What are you doing? I mean, they took Lou Dog on Warped Tour with them, and you could read about how this dog starts biting people. I think this dog bit four people and gets Sublime kicked off a Warped Tour. Some people who don't have all the information might hear that and think, oh, that dog must have been an asshole. I've heard a lot of stories about how Dalmatians are mean. Okay, maybe they are. I don't know. But uh, I've been around deaf animals before. If someone enters their field of vision, it surprises the fuck out of them. They think you're trying to sneak up on them and they attack you. I can guarantee you that if that dog was deaf and they're in a chaotic situation. Yeah. So you're in a chaotic situation and you're deaf. Of course, you're going to bite somebody if you're a dog because you're like, oh, shit, I'm being attacked every (laughs) second of the day. Yeah. Where'd you come from? Oh, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, a little cute boy, but the dog doesn't hear you say that, doesn't hear your voice, because he's on fucking stage getting fucking his eardrums blown out. Oh, Dogs have already have more sensitive oh, yeah. hearing than humans. <sighs> Jesus Christ, stage volume at a show? Loud. Over 100 decibels. Oh, that's, that's just punishment, dude. That uh, poor dog. Man, I mean, fuck, I dude. mean, <laughs> we... Probably could do an entire episode on just on the fact that he's so shitty. I was going to say, we maybe should have at least saved this until the end, like we did with Pinkerton for Weezer, because I'm already at like a seven or an eight with this band. Yeah, you're already pissed. I'm I'm right there. You don't even own a dog and you're pissed. (laughs) How stupid do you have to be to be this bad at owning a dog? I don't think it's stupid. I think it's selfish. How selfish do you have to be? Oh, I think there's a lot of not smart going into all of this. And I know not very many people have ever claimed that the people in Sublime were geniuses or whatever, but God damn dude children are smarter than this that's true i see people walking through my neighborhood all the time and their kids walk the dogs and i don't think even one second badly about the fact that there's a kid walking the dog all right whatever okay these are dumb people and big surprise they make dumb music shockingly dumb music here's a real easy way just real fast if you aren't sure about whether some music you're hearing at a party is stupid or not look around the room if there are people playing air guitar It could still be fine. But if you see anyone air DJing, like mimicking, scratching a record, the music that you're currently hearing. Dumb as fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I like how you did that. The the people can't see the the arm motion. There's a lot of things people can't see right now. Thank God. And as for the fans, let's just say for many of the reasons we just went over, I think you should not be allowed to procreate if you have that sublime sun tattooed anywhere on your person. Which is a very common tattoo. Oh, yeah. If anyone has never seen one of these, just Ooh. go to Google image search sublime tattoo and enjoy that. Yeah, it's a shockingly common tattoo. You probably shouldn't even be allowed to have a dog if you have this tattoo because <laughs> you're going to try to make it drink whiskey or whatever other dumb shit you think is funny. There's actually a really, really good chance that if you have a sublime tattoo, at some point you try to get your dog high. And so many of them are just bad. You're just fucking hanging out at a party and someone's like, my brother made a tattoo gun. You want to get inked up? Yeah. yeah, bro. What should we do? Uh, I think you know what we're going to do, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's like you're reading my mind. All the while, the guy in the corner is playing the same song six times in a row. And it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everyone's, yeah, yeah. Get this shitty fucking shitty sun tattoo on you. Yeah. Garbage. Batfish sucks too, by the way. And since we're talking about uh, Sublime playing at a party, there's not a good Sublime song. I know there's some permafried sublime fan is going to hit us up with this one song they think that we couldn't possibly talk shit on. Listen, this is not a good band that has some bad songs and we're just sort of cherry picking around and making fun of the ones that we think 
are really bad and ignoring all the great ones. This is a terrible ban start to finish. There's no middle ground here. This is just bad. It's scraping the bottom of bad. And, and Bad Fish is this one where everyone's like, yeah, but Bad Fish, bro. This is the song that a lot of people think is their best one. It's fucking trash. It's one that starts off with uh, the sounds of them being at a party, happy party, California vibes, whatever. Someone's playing an acoustic guitar at the party. The worst possible thing a person can do at a party. If I'm at a party and someone gets out an acoustic guitar, I am leaving. This should just be the rule. When the acoustic guitar comes out, it's time for everyone to go. It's my rule. Because there's a really good chance. (laughs) It's time for me to go. There's a really good chance within the first one to three songs that it's going to be a sublime song. Well, they put these party sounds at the beginning of the song to set the vibe, set that party vibe. And then it just kicks over to a studio recording that has all these stupid ass sound effects to signify the drugs kicking in or whatever. Weird. Sound effects and shit. It sounds like a kid's book. <laughs> if I'm sitting down my son and opening up one, oh, that's a sound of a whatever. It's like somebody who's just punching buttons on a kid's book. Oh, we should add that into the song. It's really cool. It's trippy. And I just I don't know why people think that song is some sort of special song or different than all the rest of it. It's the same. The, it's got a trash guitar solo in it because every Sublime song that has a guitar solo in it is a trash guitar solo. You mean, solo. wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that he... He can't play the guitar like a motherfucking riot? Maybe like a father fucking riot, but not like a motherfucking riot. Not a good guitar player. Do you think any member of this band could define the word sublime? No. I just can't imagine. Yeah, I doubt they've thought about what it means or how it ties into uh, the ripoff shitty music that they made. Oh, yeah, man. I would say like 85% of Sublime fans have no idea how much of this band's career is straight lifted. They're essentially just quoting other bands' music the entire time. If not outright stealing it. If you want to be generous, say covering it, I would say fucking stealing it, putting their own lyrics over it. 85% of them don't know that it's a ripoff is what you're saying? No, dude. I think most Sublime fans are ignorant enough to not know that Sublime did not write a song like Smoke Two Joints. That's just a Sublime song, bro. What are you talking about? Only it's not. It's fucking not. It is an extremely stupid song. I'll give you that. I understand why people think it's a sublime song. Fits in with the vibe of sublime. Yeah, it would work. I thought about pretending to like one sublime song just to fuck with people. And I was going to pretend to like the song Scarlet Begonias because that's a Grateful Dead cover. And it would fuck everyone up because everyone knows how much I hate Grateful Dead. But yeah, I'm just, I'm not that good of an actor. Yeah, I, I mean, this, this song is fucking horrible. <laughs> Tyler's not that committed to the comedy. No. Although you did, didn't you say that, uh, you did say something positive about the Beatles one time, either on Twitter or on our podcast. I don't know what you're talking about. Pretty sure. Don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's fine. We'll come back to it. Uh I bet we will. Um, all right. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It probably a lot of times on this podcast, white people need to leave reggae alone. You do have a strong stance there. That's very true. You've definitely said that multiple times and come back to it. Put it on a t-shirt. I'll wear it. (laughs) White people leave reggae alone. I'm not saying this is reggae because clearly it is not reggae, but this is also clearly a situation where white people heard reggae and thought they needed to fuck with it. It's one of those bands that falls into the rock category all the time and as a fan of rock and roll, it bothers me. It's one of the bands, as many of these fucking bands are, that when they get that rock label, I'm like, this isn't fucking, is this, this isn't rock music? What it makes it rock? A guitar? It's a mishmash of everything they like played poorly in an ADHD manner with very little skill. Listen to what Sublime does to the Melodian song, Rivers of Babylon. That's not okay. <laughs> if you listen to these two songs back to back, this is very specifically why people hate white people. Like if you're a white people and you're hearing me, <laughs> hey, I'm a white people too. This is the problem, folks. Like, do, don't fucking do this. This is what causes all the issues. Yeah. This, this bullshit. This is why I get uncomfortable sometimes being a white person. Because I know <laughs> that some people look at me and think that I'm a part of all this other extra shit that's happening. <laughs> they and, look at you and go, is that you think that guy likes Sublime? And uh, they're like debating it in their head. A shiver just went up my spine. <laughs> they were wrong to do that. You know, anyone who liked it was wrong. Uh, let's just say we're not mad. We're just disappointed. And the best thing we can do now is try to make sure that this never happens again. Here's the thing. I, and I do wonder this. 
with the band being what they are, if they came out in 2018, no. would they be a band? Like, would Twitter I, I just would don't, destroy this? Yes, I don't think people would respond. Dude, to- Twitter got mad at Bruno Mars the other day. Yeah, Twitter would well, shit on this. Yeah, yeah, it's putting out a, a song called "Date Rape" where it's not. I know. Uh, How the fuck could Bruno do that? <laughs> I just don't think it would exist. I think if Sublime came out today. I just don't think people would respond the way that they do. And it's weird that it's still carried on. Absolutely. While we're still on music, I just want to say, I think Bob Marley sucks too. If you're going to listen to reggae, which I mean, it's cool. Definitely listen to like the Toots and the Maytals. That shit's awesome. But really, I would suggest that you stop listening to reggae and start listening to dub, you fucking lightweights. Let's get into the real shit here. King Tubby, Scratch Perry, Fuck with that. Mm-hmm. If you think that this shit's cool, that'll rock your world. That makes me feel better because uh, I don't think this is cool and I don't know who any of those people are. So it's yeah. great. It's perfect. <laughs> That's fantastic. Actually, it makes me feel really good. All right. Well, you I'm know. from Bob Marley because it's unafucking voidable. Do, do you know who I think is better than Sublime? No doubt. Man, that's tough. That's Wh- who would you rather listen to, Sublime I, or No Doubt? Oh, my God. Is shoving a pen in my ear? an option or I have to do one or the other. I guess I would rather listen to No Doubt. That's tough. That's just really tough. I mean, I'm not going to bully you. If you if you want to listen to Sublime, we can just put that on, no, in this podcast no, episode. No, 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 no. And then if you want to get into like what Sublime is responsible for in the world, which I think is worth getting into, uh, let's talk about a little guy named Jack Johnson. Because I think that Jack fucking Johnson is just some dude who woke up one day and realized that he could become probably a millionaire by making some half-assed, sublime-sounding songs that were more chill, less manic, less questionable lyrics, just like a really safe, your mom would like it version of this white people nonsense. My perception of sublime before I started doing research, because I did, not, yeah. not because you yell at me every time, no, yeah. not, not, not because you point that out on Twitter, uh, because I actually wanted to. My perception of the band is that the music is like happy and go luck because it's like this like uppity, jammy beat vibe thing or whatever. Yeah. But when you actually read the lyrics, if you you know want to suffer through that, this is not happy go lucky music. The vibe is not the vibe. People think that there's this vibe there, yeah. and that's not the vibe that I'm picking up when I'm hearing Sublime. No songs about thinking rape is funny. Yeah, it really freaks me out when I think about how many people listen to these songs, the subject matter that is in these songs, the attitude about that subject matter, and how many people relate to all of it. I really do think at least some of them haven't actually listened or read the lyrics or really digested the lyrics. And then the other half of them don't care. It's just a reason to get high. Because he talks about getting high all the time. He talks about drugs all the time. So if you're just getting high all the time and doing drugs all the time, you just want to listen to talks about doing drugs and getting high all the time. So much worse than that, too, though. But we're talking songs about your mom smoking crack. Yeah, which I never even realized that was the actual line until today. It's the first time I've ever read the lyrics. And I was like, oh, shit. And not only do drugs seem to be the answer to everything in this dude's life, But alcohol, possibly the most damaging drug there is, somehow equals freedom. 40 ounces to freedom, bro. All you got to do is go get a 40 ounce and you're free. Escapism, dude. This is damn near a dystopian worldview bordering on nihilism. I'm not down with it, to say the least. (laughs) Yeah, me either. Actually, I've never really been into Sublime. I have definitely know the lyrics to probably the the couple, two or three hit songs because they were unavoidable, which they're actually so unavoidable that I guarantee you if you were to go to San Diego Beach tomorrow. Boombox, Sublime. Someone is going to be playing Sublime Mm -hmm. as if it literally just came out this year or yesterday. Because time's not real, bro. It's definitely not real in Southern California. Time is an illusion, bro. This band has a song about knowing that it's wrong to be attracted to a 12-year-old child, but still being attracted to her anyway. I don't even know what to really say. That's just... People think this is funny. Is it not funny? It's really weird that for some reason they hear this 
and they know these lyrics and they repeat them over and over and over again when they play this song and don't it never registers in their head. I got to assume it got into your head in some cases pre-puberty, in some cases mid-puberty, like before your brain is fully formed, before you're a member of society really. There are no like consequences for the things that you believe and say and do because you're just a dumbass kid. All these lyrics get into your head at that point. And for some reason, as they got older, didn't actually let their opinion on something change. You think it can't be that bad because I liked it when I was a kid, you know, like kiss. Because it's tied to maybe an emotion or a feeling when they were a kid. So they just hold on to it so tight still, even though when they sing it now and they have kids, you should be thinking to yourself, that's actually really fucked up. And I shouldn't be singing this song with my kid in the car. Yeah, I think y'all need to cut this rope and let this little robo drift out to sea. It is time to stop. It is time to be honest about what Sublime is. I have a real problem with this dude acting hard. He talks about guns so fucking much. Uh, yeah, dude, but, again, it comes back to, I don't think that people think about it when they hear the lyrics of uh, Papa Can and Sancho and Slap Her Down or the... Uh, Stick a barrel, double barreled shotgun straight down Sancho's Santeria, throat. Santeria, yeah. Santeria. Uh, <laughs> I just don't. That's like uber violent shittiness. It's not funny or it's just shitty. Here's something I realized when getting ready to do this episode. I say Sublime sucks. You know, when, if anyone starts talking about Sublime, I'm like, yeah, Sublime sucks. It's just in casual conversation. I'm never even remembering that the song Santeria exists when I say that. I'm just talking about Sublime in general. I always forget that this song even exists. When you add this song in, holy shit. Now we're talking about an all-time bad band, a historically bad band with this song in the mix because it's just got it all rolled into one. The lyrics are bad. I've got to assume this is their most popular song, It is right? the most popular. I that, so. that, that I could tell it was the most popular. It's the number one thing that pops up if you search Sublime almost across everything that I saw. I think this is one of those songs where someone could know all the words to it and not even know the name of the band that does the song. That's how you know a song is just massive. The lyrics of this song are a fucking mess. Half of it is about how enlightened he is, and then the other half is how he wants to physically assault his ex-girlfriend and shoot her new boyfriend. By literally sticking a double barrel shotgun down their throat. Double barrel, is what I think is what he says exactly. I won't think twice to stick that barrel straight down Sancho's throat. Yeah. Believe me when I say that I got something for his punk ass. But, but what, what I really want to know and what I really want to say, I can't define. It's love that I need. Dude, is it love that you need? Because a second ago, it sounded like you needed to pop a cap in Sancho's ass and hit your fucking girlfriend. Yeah. This is not healthy behavior. Not even good expressions of how but what's weird is you you listen it is by sorry i got it is the number one song okay at least on spotify by 30 million more plays than oh. any other so it's an extremely that is tragic that that, that many plays have happened with no this song. no 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 that's more oh, oh god damn that's more than oh the next my one god. <laughs> i'm about to melt your brain i'm gonna I, jump off the roof of this uh, building if you, dude this song has been streamed no, don't. 167 million times uh, on Spotify. The next song down was 30 million less. Uh, than the, that's what I was saying. That hurts that's, me. That's a lot of a lot of people for some reason that think it's so. It's it's got this like catchy little generic hook in it, and I guess people don't realize what they're singing about is this dude beating his girlfriend and shooting her new boyfriend. This is also a song where I think people who don't know how to play guitar hear it and say, "Man, I wish I could play guitar like that." Hey, if you've ever said that, listen to me right now, because I've got incredible news for you. I'm going to make your day. You can do it. You fucking can. <laughs> yeah. You, you totally can. If you can figure out how to tune a guitar and make a bar chord, you're halfway there, baby. You've got this. But also, don't. Yeah. Well, two things you could do. You could go to Guitar Center and probably learn how to play it. And you could also, within two minutes of sitting there learning how to do it, get a lot of dirty looks. Oh, God. I can't imagine how We many should times. go to Guitar Center. I don't like that idea. ask them how many <laughs> times people sit down and play a Sublime song. Probably half the people who <laughs> subscribe to our podcast are Guitar Center employees, dude. I'm yeah. sure of it. Uh, Yo, if you're a Guitar Center employee, shoot us an email and let us know. But I, I want to know. I, I got to think the Sublime is in the <laughs> top five it is. songs that some dickhead plays when they it sit is. down you and play guitar. You hear it every day. I guarantee yeah. you, you do. Um, another song where it bothers me when he's acting hard is the song 
this this may be the one where it bothers me the most. Uh, is April 29th, 1992, that song, which is about the riots in L.A. after the acquittal of the cops who beat Rodney King. First off, your boy Brad sings the wrong-ass date in the song, so I'm not buying into this whole theory that the lyrics are autobiographical or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's no fucking way this white dude was out there in the middle of all that shit. This dude definitely watched this shit happen on TV with all the other white people, you know? Yeah, yeah. But whatever. Next, there's this line... If you look at the street, it wasn't about Rodney King. It's this fucked up situation and these fucked up police. It's about coming up and staying on top and screaming 187 on a motherfucking cop. Okay, pause. What? <laughs> your solution. Run your solution by me one more time. I just need to hear that. What, what was you're your not, answer? Wait, you're not down for shooting cops? Just real fast. We're going <laughs> to run up on police officers and scream the scanner code for murder. At them. I wonder if he did it. Did, no. <laughs> of course he didn't do it. He, he didn't do it. No. He said, okay. We just need to yell at these cops that we're going to kill them and that'll fix everything. In his head, it probably made sense. Here's the worst part of this song. If you really pay attention to this shit, if you just look at these lyrics and read it, this is basically an all lives matter anthem. Right before everything I was just talking about, there's this part where he says, they said it was for the black man. They said it was for the Mexican and not for the white man. Realize he's literally saying those riots were not a protest of institutionalized racism and systematic police violence against minorities. Those riots are about me too, bro. Because I'm white, bro. But yeah, I'm mad about the cops too, bro. Because I had to watch that Rodney King beating on TV, bro. He was really upset. That fucked me up, man. Those riots were not about the black man or the Mexican. It was about me, too. All lives matter. He paved the way for all lives matter before it was even a thing. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Again, I, I legit don't think this band would exist in 2018. Fuck no. There's nothing cool about any of the shit that he's saying now. And I don't even think it was cool back then. It was never cool. No. It's never cool to talk about how you suffered just as much as a black dude in LA in the 90s. Are you kidding me? Fuck off, dude. It was not fucking white dudes in a band that were suffering the most. Also, this is a band where they do this baby talk thing in the lyrics, which we've talked about with other bands too, drives me fucking insane. Me do not want no lover. Me don't want no lover. Hey, hey. Pure poetry. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'll admit that I don't know a lot about dicks, but I think if your mushroom tip goes drip, 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 as soon as she pulls it out, then you've got to have like a venereal disease, maybe a bladder infection. You're definitely going to want to go ahead and go to a doctor instead of writing a song. Not good. Not good. <laughs> if you listen to Sublime and you think that that's normal, it's not. So why do people like this shit so much? Uh, You know... I think similar to other bands that we've done, I think sometimes when a member of the band passes away... Oh, you're not going to go there. I am, because it's just... It's true. Uh, there's a list of 900 bands that appealed to the exact same crowd as Sublime did at the same time as Sublime, and nobody gives a fuck about any of those bands now. They're all still alive. Do you think we can figure out why that is? Because they're all still alive. Do you, do you think there might be a reason people think Sublime is one of the best bands ever? Because they're not all still alive. Instead of, say, like the Cottonmouth Kings? Because they're all still alive. Bloodhound Gang? I think they're all still alive. Sugar Ray? Pretty sure they're all still alive. I think sometimes, um, not it's oftentimes, when a band starts to have some success and someone dies, it becomes it becomes so much bigger for some reason. I don't Like this hero worship... You know, and first of all, it absolutely sucks when they die. That's a huge fucking bummer. He was, died from a drug overdose. It's not funny. And if you have a heroin or drug issue, you should seek help. It's not cool. Um, but that doesn't, doesn't mean that we should put this band on a pedestal because that's kind of what happened. In 2014, K-Rock, that's the radio station in L.A., uh, said Sublime was their third most played artist for the sixth year in a row behind... Two other bands, and I would love for everyone to see if they can just spot a trend in all three of these bands. Give them to me. What are they? Okay. The three most played artists on one of the most listened to radio stations in America are Nirvana, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Sublime. What the fuck year is it? There's something all these bands have in common, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
I've got to be some kind of asshole if I think that that's the reason <laughs> why these are the most popular bands. I think it's just probably the reality. There must be some, it's, it's just like, I don't know what it straight is. Straight coincidence, Can't probably. Put, couldn't put my finger on what the defining thing well, first of all, beyond just that, that really just pisses me off because then people wonder why rock and roll is dead. Yeah, maybe support people who are alive. Yeah, fucking A, man. Give money to not dead people. Yeah, well, play some songs that came out in the last five years, not 20 years ago. Well, Randy, uh, our band's about to make it. Uh, it's 2018. You know what we got to do. <laughs> you know, we're going to take good care of your mom. We're going to take good care of your dad. But it's time to do that thing we talked about, buddy. All the money we're going to make after you're gone. Sorry, Randy. It's going to go to a good cause. We drew straws. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guy. <laughs> oh, geez. And anyone who thinks this band would have been super successful without Bradley dying, okay, you love that song Date Rape so much, right, brah? Such a funny song, right, brah? Uh, released as a single in 1991, Nobody Gave a Fuck. Dude dies, then now that's one of the most popular songs ever. I mean, it was released as a single while he was alive. Why wasn't it such a massive fucking hit? Also, if uh, you've somehow managed to talk yourself into believing that the song Date Rape is a woke commentary on date rape. It's certainly not condemning it to the level that maybe you would expect. Or It's kind of, I mean, making light of it. Uh, here's a quote from Brad. Uh, even the first part of this, I feel like a total piece of shit just even having these words come out of my mouth. So just want to want to make sure... Everyone knows you might want to prepare yourself for this. This is not going to be cool. Quote, I've never raped anyone at least as far as I can remember. We were at a party a long time ago and we were all talking about how much date rape sucks. I bet they were. Uh, this guy was like, date rape isn't so bad. If it wasn't for date rape, I'd never get laid. Everyone at the party was bummed out about it, but I was cracking up and I wrote a funny song about it. End quote. Wow. That's not... Uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, if your favorite band is Sublime... God damn, your favorite band sucks. You're welcome for listening to Your Favorite Band Sucks. If you have social media, then your life is already miserable, so you may as well follow us on Twitter or Instagram at YFBSPod. Track us down on Facebook. And as always, you can go to YFBSPod.com to get a link to any episode and share it on social media. Put it in an email to everyone in your contacts. Send it to everyone in the office building. Text it to that kid you had to do a project with in college and he made you listen to Sublime the entire time. Send it to whoever you want to. All right. After listening back to this episode and hearing everything that Mark and I said, I feel like I need to point out that neither he nor I are medical professionals. Nothing we say on this podcast should be taken as medical advice. If anyone listening to this has a mushroom tip that goes drip, 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 you are entirely responsible for whatever decisions you make before, after, and during any time you spend listening to the Your Favorite Band Sucks podcast. Next week's episode is on The Who. You've all been thinking it, but you've been afraid to say it. Mark and I... Do not give a fuck. The Who are one of the worst bands to ever press an album. And next week, we're going to tell you exactly why. The Who suck. <laughs>